What up, dudes? It's Gaz. And welcome back to another Warframe video. So, you guys voted on it, and today we have the next level Panzer Vulpophila build. This is one of the most popular types of campaigns in the whole game, being a Vulpophila. And I've done a ton of testing to make sure we have the best build possible today. And I have some of the things we're talking about today, I have not seen anyone even remotely mention. So, you're in the right place for Warframe content, trying to keep you guys on the cutting edge of all the best builds and technology here. If you enjoy this types of stuff, make sure you're sub the channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads, news videos, build videos, all that kind of stuff. You're in the right place for Warframe content. And yeah, this will be a video that is going to be covering Panzer in many ways. So I will be exploiting things that some people might understand. But trust me, there's some stuff in here you might not know about already. It's, even if you're like a high-level player. All right, so starting off with the Panzer Wolfpophila's abilities. So we summon in some enemies here. And what the Panzer Wolfpophila does, it launches out these quills that cause viral procs enemies. You can see right there, 10 viral procs. That's the maximum viral procs you're allowed to have on an enemy. That makes their damage the massively increased they take. And as you can see right now... Well, it's actually, I'm trying to have it get destroyed by these enemies, but once it is destroyed, it has a unique way of respawning, unlike a lot of the other companions in this game. And yeah, we got a pretty tanky build, so it takes a while for it to die. Once the companion dies, it becomes a mini sentinel. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing. This sentinel uh, form right here cannot be affected by a lot of the bond mods that we have in the game that make the respawn go faster. So you are dealing with the base respawn time of this Vulpophila once it dies and is basically put into its larval form. It will respawn. Like, this is basically the precursor to uh, the instantly respawning pets we have nowadays. Uh, but you can't really reduce the timer in any easy manner. So, yeah. It will launch out those viral quills for its main ability. It will turn into that little mini sentinel thing as its other ability. And while it's in that sentinel form, it will still launch viral quills. What has changed to make this thing stronger than ever and something that you should definitely consider, uh, even though you should have probably considered it in the first place? Well, as you can see right here, Archon Stretch is being procced by the new claw mods on this Pandora Pophila, which enables you to have guaranteed energy regen all the time. So we go ahead and cast some abilities. I actually put Blind Rage on Caliban after I discovered this. We're going to drop all of our energy pool here. And now, as you see, the energy is regening slowly but surely. It's about, uh, I think it's about two energy per second with our con stretch. If you have Nourish, that will multiply the energy, multipl uh, energy regen multiplier. And you're going to get about ten energy per second just on the pet existing. So... Yeah, it could not do that before. That's going to be part of the new mods we're using today. Additionally, these pets, or these enemies that are damaged by the pet are going to actually have an increased chance to drop uh, health orbs, which if you have Equilibrium on, is going to be even more energy. So it's a very, very good caster uh, companion. If you are a Freyless and run the Archon Stretch mod, and you are pretty energy hungry, you could actually change your build to put on, like, Blind Rage. Yesterday I had, um, I had... Precision, or sorry, Umbral Intensify here instead. I'm not saying it's better to have this on there, but you technically can run this if you have a good energy economy, which with our Energy Nexus and Archon Stretch, we actually can. The Archon Stretch, this mod that comes from uh, Call's Garrison, gives you, once you deal uh, electric damage with the ability, it will restore energy per second. That is partially because of our Panzer Cat. Our Panzer Cat is going to be having the mod Shocking Claws. We'll go over all this stuff. But let's first talk about the basics of the Panzer Cat. So these antigens and mutagens, these things right here are not important at all. These are going to give you, uh, your companion, resistances on their health and armor. So if you see right here, reduces incoming impact damage, cold damage, and that's all it does because I only have two antigens on here. If I went to my crazy predecessor level video on tomorrow... Um, which I don't even know where it's equipped right now. Um, yeah, right here. If you look at my crazy predecessor site, you might see, look at all these antigens and mutagens. It has every antigen and mutagen. But the thing is, it only works with its armor. So we don't care about those at all. It does have a lot more, it has a lot more resistance. If you're looking for a health build on your predecessor site or your Vulpophila, you want to go for that stuff. But trust me, it's not worth it. And the way you get that is you basically combine a bunch of, uh, a bunch of predecessor sites and Vulpophilas until you get the all the resistances to be like inherited, basically. I would not recommend doing this, especially on the Panzer Vulpophila, because it is not going over an HP build at all. But yeah, if you are going over an HP build, you might want to consider that stuff. Those antigens and mutagens are not important as remotely for our, vi for our video today. Just I would say, if I were you, use the antigens and mutagens to look the, make the Vulpophila look the coolest to you, because that is it is also an appearance thing as well, in addition to the armor being changed. But yeah, got the Panzer Vulpophila. You can obtain these on Dimos. You're getting an uh, injured Vulpophila pet. And here is the number one zombie cat build. So, there is a lot of buffs that we are getting from this Panzer Wolfophila here, and it is probably it is probably still the best man in the game. 
Miners may be like a sensible with a Verglas Prime or something like that. This is one of the best companions in the game, uh, and it is, it's been that way for a long time, all right? So explaining what every mod does here, uh, we will also get some Steel Pan gameplay to show how this, this boost is actually quite helpful in mission. So Viral Quills, that's what we're talking about, it's launching the Quills. Now, this is not a melee attack, this is a ranged attack. So lots of the mods in this game that work for the Claws only work on melee attacks. So be, be aware of that when you're modding your Claws, do not put on like Bell Ringer, don't put on like Magnetic Strike. Those don't work on ranged attacks, they only work on melee attacks unfortunately. So yeah, for this build is a full utility like Viral Procker dude. And we can actually get more than just Viral Procs, we can get Fire Procs and some other stuff too, but we'll talk about them when we get to the Claws. So yeah, most important mod right here. Second most important mod, Panzer Devolution. Once this thing dies, it becomes a little mini sensor that follows you around. Now, again, that is not affected by things like um, Momentous Bond or, uh, I guess, Tenacious Bond. Even Headshot Kills reduce companion recovery time by three seconds. That does not work on the larval form. You have to wait 30 seconds either way. And also, Medi Pet Kit does not work either. So you that, that technically is a reason you could take this off, but I'm going to recommend you don't take this off because that would be kind of weird to take off Panzer Devolution on the Panzer. But yeah, technically you could consider that if you want to utilize Bond mods for instant uh, regen. Now, as far as the next mod, Synth Deconstruct, this is going to be the one that gives us extra health orbs. Enemies injured by the companion have a 25% chance to drop a health orb when killed. Also, holstering primary weapons and uh, secondaries reloads 5% of the magazine. Be aware of that. If you have this mod on there, do not run the Occupore, because it will it will get rid of your uh, sentient surge tentacles. But yeah, that being said, enemies injured by the command have increased chance to drop health orbs. Since we have Equilibrium Shard in our Caliban, we are getting constant energy from the Panzer just damaging things. It, it puts viral on them, we kill them, we get orbs. That's It's a very, very easy thing to do, and it will be spreading those spores. Like, viral Quills hits six enemies at a time, and it's spamming it pretty frequently. So we'll be getting lots and lots of orbs here. That's great. Next one, Tenacious Bond. Increases our frame's crit damage as long as our companion has over 50% crit chance. With this build, it does have over 50% crit chance, and I'm going to show you a budget build, too, to achieve that uh, with lower investment. Extremely important mod here, Restore for Retrieve. If you ever see a, if you see a Panzer build that does not have this on there, that, that person's not actually playing the game. They're just, like, making a build for the Sim. But basically, doubling your resources or... Uh, actually, this one only works on resources. So, the Retriever mods are extremely important. This is basically the replacement for Charm. You got Loyal Retriever working on credits or resources. You got Resourceful Retriever working on only resource but increased drop chance. And Prosperous Retriever working only on credits but increased drop chance. Depending on what you want, you can go for Loyal Retriever for a little bit of everything. But I... Someone that has a lot of credits like me, I go for Resource Retriever for Double Steel Essence. Very, very important mod. You get this from, I believe, uh, I believe you get some from Dymos or something. But yeah, either way, make sure you have this mod. Extremely important. Haste and Deflection. This, in combination with Calculated Redirection, gives our companion decent shield gate. And it is, since it has to, it does not really get bond mods to instantly revive, you have to be a little bit careful with that. Now, since I am playing Caliban currently, I can put on Link Redirection. This build does not need Link Redirection. If you're on Caliban or a high shield frame, run, uh, run Link Redirection over Calculated Redirection. This is basically when you have a no shield frame, just to show that it works on any character. We need 1,200 shields for Reinforced Bond, and Panzer Cat has enough shields with just Calculated Redirection. But yeah, technically it would be better if I had this on here since I'm playing Caliban at this moment. Tech Assault. Kavat has a 60% chance to ignore lethal damage to become immune for 4 seconds. 60% of the time works every time. Basically, since the cat cannot be brought back from the dead with Momentous Bot instantly, we have a 60% chance the cat will not die. So that's pretty good. Uh, this is a mod slot you could definitely have flexibility on. Uh, there is a, another ability for it called Martyr Symbiosis. This basically is a get-out-of-jail-free card when your character dies itself. You, the cat will sacrifice itself to give you an extra revive, basically, when you go down. It instantly revives you, too. Um... You can run this, but for me, I never feel like I need this. So I'm going to have the cat the cat being alive more than the uh, Martyr Symbiosis being active. But yeah, you could definitely try that out. Or you could try a different ability if you prefer that instead. Tech Assault is not the best mod, but is one of the only options we have that's actually pretty good for a utility build. And Reinforced Bond gives us fire rate on our frame if we have enough overshields or normal shields on the, on the companion. So as you can see right here, as far as buffs we're getting, okay? Let me list out every buff we're getting. Let's get some gameplay footage too. We are getting crit damage increase. We are getting constant energy regen from the Archon Stretch tech I'm about to show you. We're getting increased fire rate. We're getting, uh, did I mention Viral Prox? I don't think I mentioned Viral Prox. We're getting doubled up loot. We are getting so many buffs from this companion. Oh, I forgot the extra health orbs too. The list goes on. This is one of the 
crazy the crazy amounts of buffs you can get in warframe from a companion and they're also really good buffs too crit damage viral and fire rate that's like modding your gun basically that's like a big big dps increase so yeah you are definitely getting one of the best uh, companions in the game easily right now and of course the last mod is fetch to pick up that loot from far away highly recommend that one if, again if you see someone with this no retriever mod and no fetch mod on their build something is definitely amiss okay so make sure <laughs> make sure you're looking at those mods before you just copy them over all right, for the Claws of the Panzer, this is where the next level technology is going to be unlocked. I'm going to tell you a description of what multiple options you have on here. Now, we have the uh, the Config A, basically the normal build here. I would not recommend running the Panzer for, like, you know, enemy killing damage stuff. You can. I'll show you a damage build here in a second. But we have the Shocking Claws mod on our Companion's Claws. Why do I have that over Burning Claws? Because it is this mod specifically can proc Archon Stretch. Shock Collar cannot proc Archon Stretch. Shocking Claws can, okay? So the, the both of the Claws usually don't have too much going on with them. They have, like, Toxic and Slash. If you put on Shocking Claws, it makes it become electric. And like I said, we have Archon Stretch. When we proc electric, we will get energy regen. This works, okay? That's, that, that's the, the big thing here. This works with Archon Stretch. Now your caster frames have even more energy regen, and, and with combination of our Synth Deconstruct mod, we'll get Equilibrium Health Orbs and constant energy regen with this. So if you throw on Nourish, it is going to be like, you know, up to 50 energy per sec, or 50 energy like over 10 seconds, or 5 seconds, whatever it is. Very good stuff there. And of course, this is, you could just do a budget build here. You could have an unranked version of Shocking Claws, and whatever the lowest rank of Bite will be to allow you to get 50% crit chance, that's all you need on this, guys. You don't need to have like, crazy dog stat stick stuff i'm going to show it to you but yeah since we are focusing on the companion just doing its abilities not attacking we have elusive posture the companion will gain 50 percent evasion i mean if it's attacking it's just be likely to die honestly so i'd recommend that you run elusive posture but if you do want to have an attacking things you got options like assassin's posture making you deal more damage to overguard enemies and eximus frenzied posture giving increased status duration could be kind of nice uh, but yeah, really guys, I would not recommend running the Panzer Wakfala for damage. I'd recommend running a Kubrow for damage because they are a lot more AoE. But yeah, if you do want to just put Assassin's Posture, they're probably the strongest damage posture mod. As far as the other stuff on here, uh, it doesn't matter. Like, this is just to have flexibility to make it a damage build, and I feel like it. Now, since this procs Archon Stretch, what else can you do with these Claw mods uh, proccing elemental, or like basically Archon mods? Well, you could go for... Um, you could go for... Well, actually, Sepsis Claws did not work. This Now, this did not work with Archon Continuity, unfortunately. I did test that. But you could throw on Burning Claws, and if you don't care about Archon Stretch. This can proc Cascadia Flare for your pistol, which is, it's only been like one fire proc every so often, so don't get too excited. Um, it can also do a little bit of armor strip throw in the mix, too, because fire procs do remove enemy armor. But keep in mind that not every enemy hit by the quills will be getting this fire proc. It's like one or two of the enemies get them. So let's see if we can look up for the uh, Cascadia Flare proc right here, just to show you it's working. Right there. So we got 12% Cascadia Flare. So I don't even know how much you get per stack. So it looks like we got a couple there. So she's viral and heated up. That's pretty good for damage. Um, but again, I think the Electric Claws will be a little bit better just because uh, getting that uh, Archon Stretch Energy Regen, at least for me and my Caliban build, I really, really appreciate it. So I only have Energy Nexus right now, too. So definitely less energy, but um, a little bit more Armor Strip might be good to some of you guys out there. So yeah. I would recommend Archon Stretch and this together is a next level strat. Guys, I have not seen anybody talking about this. It might not be the most important to some people out there, but I think it's pretty good on some certain frames. For example, Caliban, very good on him with Nourish. Um, some other frames, if you are running like a Zaku build, I was running this on Zaku. I'm not using Nourish on Zaku. Not that you couldn't do that. But yeah, Zaku with this gets energy regen constantly. I usually run the Stretch mod on Zaku. So basically, what frames could you utilize this new synergy with that was not available before? Um, any frame that would run the stretch mod, basically. If you are a frame that runs, or if you're playing a frame that runs range in any way, and you have extra mod capacity, you could put on Archon Stretch instead to get this built-in energy region with the Panzer. And again, guys, this was not here before the patch. This is new stuff here. Um, so frames like, uh, Caliban, I guess... I meant to say Dante could, could, could get this. Dante liked Diraga with uh, with Arc Coil before. This is basically like Diraga, but as a companion. And another thing, too, since we got Resourceful Retriever, Sentinels can't run Resourceful Retriever. So this is actually superior to a lot of things now because of the doubled loot and the viral procs. So, yeah. If you don't have the Panzer Opophila, make sure you get one and make sure you run the build in this video if you want the most out of it. 
Uh, as far as the damage build, you just basically throw on Contagious Bond. That's like the big difference. You just throw on Contagious Bond. Uh, oh, Duplex Bond could help too. That's going to make it where you get uh, AoE, uh, damage procs. But again, the dog is better for this. And we got Duplex Bond making a Illusion of the Cat, which will attack as well. That's like the biggest differences here. And the Claw Build just makes you put on Assassin's Posture or a Posture Bond. That doesn't make it just stand there and not do anything. Because the, th the reason we have Elusive Posture is that if, it doesn't, if we don't have Elusive Posture, it will be going around slicing enemies instead of actually, you know, doing its Viral Quills. And I want to do Viral Quills. That's, that's why it's here. It's here to proc Archon Stretch and a bunch of other stuff too, so... Hope you guys found this video fun, helpful, a lot of effort and work went into this one. And I'll have a uh, Pharaoh Predacite video out very soon as well. Another one is extremely good and I like a lot. So, see you guys next time. Um, let me know which kind of companion videos you want to see in the description or the, the comments down below. Um, I have a lot of them on the way. It's just I do one video per day. So, it's, it's a lot to cover. So, see you guys next time. Appreciate your support and take it easy. Peace.